It's just nice to have someone to talk to, you know? Ever since I got put in charge of the Panopticon, people treat me different, like I'm crazy for wanting to work with altered items. People just don't understand the altered items like I do, you know? I don't want to brag, but it does take a very empathetic mind to connect with the items. Still, I don't know why people are making it so personal. I mean, the teams in research handle paranatural materials every day, and no one thinks they're weird. Well, maybe that's not true. Darling is famous for being a bit out there, but when he's weird, it's charming. Altered items really aren't that frightening once you get to know them. If you figure out what they like or don't like, you know, what sets them off, then there's nothing to worry about. I guess at the end of the day, we're still just wild animals scared of our own shadows. We're supposed to be on the same team, but sometimes it feels like it's every department for themselves, like it's a race and we're all trying to be number one. If it is a race, though, I'd say Darling is a mile ahead of everyone else. He was Trench's golden boy for years, but that relationship has gotten pretty tense, or so I've heard through the grapevine. Not that I spread rumors, just, you know, people talk. Not me, though. I keep my nose to the grind. Too much work to do to focus on those kinds of things. I need to stay focused so I can get my work done and get home to feed Alfred. Of course, can't always make it home for mealtime, so I have my neighbor check in on Alfred at 7 o'clock if I'm not back yet. She's very nice. Her name is Maria. She's older. She came to New York in the 50s to attend school and has been here ever since. She has a couple of kids. I met them at Thanksgiving. Big family. Very nice people. Anyway, she has a key to my apartment and she gives Alfred his dinner if I'm not home. I'm going to have to buy her a nice fruit arrangement as a thank you after this. I'm missing a lot of Alfred's mealtimes. She's probably going to have to go to the store for more wet food. I'll have to remember to pay her back. Hold on. Let me make a note. Pay back Maria for Alfred's food. Okay. Oh, one more thing. And buy her a fruit arrangement. All right. Done. Are you a cat person? I don't think I ever asked. You seem like one, though. You'd like Alfred. He's very proper. Really carries himself well, you know? I named him after my favorite poet. Felt like a good fit. I got Alfred just before Sylvia died when I was at the... Huh. You know, I don't really remember where I got Alfred from. But, boy, those two did not get along. Ho, ho, ho. No, no, no. Sylvia thought she owned the place didn't like me getting in her way, scratched me more than once when I was just trying to move her food bowl. That cat was a real asshole. I'm realizing now that that language was not entirely, um, professional. You see, Sylvia didn't tolerate most people. Or animals. Or anything. And that's what I meant when I said asshole. I would never use that word about a person. It was just, uh, you know, uh, Hey, there's a light flashing on the console here. I got to, uh, check this out. I'll get back to you later. You know, I was in the investigation sector when it was evacuated. Well, not there, there. I was in executive because they have the best snack machines. You may think they're all the same because of that plain white packaging, but there's a difference. You know those thick ruffled potato chips? They're my favorite. All the machines outside executive carry those flimsy little thin chips. They have no texture. I may as well eat cardboard. Anyway, I get back to the elevator and they tell me the sector is being evacuated. They wouldn't even let me go back in for my stuff. Can you believe that? I worked at that desk for years. I had photos on it. My favorite stapler, one of those good ones that could staple a 50-page report, no problem, a little cash, and some, uh, personal recordings. But, uh, yeah, they lock the whole area down tight, no one in or out, and then they march us all back to executive to interview everyone. I wasn't even there when it happened, and they were asking me if I noticed anything suspicious, if I saw anyone tampering with the containment cell and so on. Well, the only thing they learned was I prefer the ruffled chips to the non-ruffled ones. Better mouthfeel, like I said before. 
And then, after three hours of questions, they recommend we all go for trauma counseling. I was like, no thanks, I have my own therapist. I know I could use the word therapist and save a few bucks, but I worry they're going to put anything I say in a file somewhere. A bit paranoid, I know, but I work for a secret government organization, so... Yeah. I stopped going a few years back. To my therapist, I mean. She said that a lot of my issues stemmed from a negative outlook. Of course, I can't tell her anything about what I do, so I just had to sit there and nod. I kept waiting for that big aha moment. You know where I realized that my need for approval stems from my dad or something? Turns out therapy doesn't work like that, so I stopped going. TV really gives you a skewed understanding of these kind of things. She did help me realize that I'm processing stress in an unhealthy way. I try not to carry all that around with me anymore, but it does stack up. Hard to just say no thank you to the anxiety buzzing in your head. One really helpful thing she had me do was find a creative outlet. I started doing some experimental music slash poetry that I think was really ahead of its time. This was years back. I'm cooking up some pretty new sounds these days. Think My Bleeding Clock meets Sylvia Plath. Do you play any instruments? Well, I could see you being a guitarist, maybe a bassist. It's funny, I played the tuba in high school band. My favorite was In the Hall of the Mountain King. Tuba didn't get a lot of spotlight in most of the songs Mrs. McKinley chose, but Mountain King was my time to shine. Ah, oh, classic. I've moved on to less mainstream instruments now, but the tuba will always be a part of me. What were we talking about before? Right, the evacuation. Yeah, I heard afterward that the Hartman specimen had gotten loose and killed some staff. They had me digitizing records in some dark corner of the sector, so I didn't know a whole lot about the Bright Falls investigation at the time. It's a strange case. Most AWEs are one and done, but Bright Falls has pretty regular flare-ups. Three incidents since 1970 when we first started tracking it. I got really interested when I heard Alan Wake was involved with the latest occurrence. I'm a huge Wake fan. I love the Alex Casey novels. That over-the-top hard-boiled detective thing is right up my alley. They're making a movie of the series. But the guy who plays Casey doesn't have enough gravel in his voice, you know? I remember being so pissed when Wake killed off Casey in the books. It's not a huge surprise, though. Wake sounded like a bit of a dick. Drank too much. Fought paparazzi. The tabloids even said he was an abusive husband. So, yeah troubled artist and all that. Apparently, there were chapters of an unfinished manuscript floating around after Wake disappeared. People say they're cursed, which is a very discriminatory term against altered materials, by the way. The forums all call the unfinished book Departure because Wake kept saying it would be a departure from his previous work. I found some pages that are supposedly the real deal on the internet. It's pretty dark stuff. He was going full horror, which makes sense since he used to write for Night Springs, but I would have preferred if he did something a little lighter. I've always said Wake had a great instinct for humor. Hey, did you know we own Night Springs? Yeah, the Bureau bought the rights after the original series ended. I've sent some story suggestions to the production team, but apparently they are not accepting pitches at this time. Typical. I'd be a great addition to their team, right? Huh, I didn't see you nod. Is this thing not on? Let me check. Huh. <sighs> okay. Oh, the wire's down here. Huh. Oh, it looks like it should be working. Hello? If you can hear me, uh, shoot something. Huh, that was inconclusive. You shoot so often, it's hard to know when it's intentional. There also could be a delay on this video feed. Uh, maybe the system just needs a reboot. This is a good opportunity to use a restroom anyway. Stay safe, ma'am. Uh, you guys are going to escort me, right? Okay, good. Kirkland was a good boss. 
He treated everyone fair, which is pretty rare around here. It was tough for him to see his department suffer. I think that's what made him quit. We were overworked and understaffed after the Hartman incident. I don't know what was going on with him and Trench, but there were rumors flying around like crazy. Some people said Trench didn't like internal investigations looking into his management team. All I know is what I heard around the water cooler. I was pretty low on the totem pole back then. Did data entry mostly. Keep your head down. Do your work. That's my motto. Got me to where I am today, so obviously it's a pretty good one. I knew the investigation sector was a dead end, so I was always on the lookout for a transfer. When a spot opened up in the Panopticon, I jumped on it like a cat. A cat motivated by professional development. I never looked back. Except for the things I had to leave at my desk when we evacuated. I did actually try to pay a ranger to go back in and get those. They refused. They even told Marshall, who chewed me out for like an hour. There's a good lesson for you, ma'am. Rangers are tattletales. Don't trust them. Yeah, you two heard me. Oh yeah, just keep doing robot voices. That's super helpful. I think they have superiority complexes. Just because they get the cool guns doesn't mean they're more important than you and me. This is a good segue into another issue. I think all staff should be trained in the use of firearms. I mean, if a hiss gets in here, what am I going to do? Throw my copy of Panopticon Safety Protocols and Regulations at it? I'm a sitting duck. Upper middle management should have a way to defend themselves. I know everyone carrying guns may not be appropriate in a workplace environment, but we here at the FBC face some pretty dangerous stuff on a fairly regular basis. I can start a petition and get some signatures on your desk if you think that would be helpful. Also, hazard pay. What exactly is our policy on hazard pay? We could be making a pretty penny right now, given all the, <laughs> you know, hazards. I can't tell you how many times a... Hey, is that a quarter? You will not believe this, but I just found a silver dollar on the ground. One of those Sacagawea ones. We were just talking about money and a dollar shows up. Synchronicity, as those dweebs in research would say. You know, I never bought into that garbage. The entire theory seems way too convenient to me. Things happen because they happen, not because of some metaphysical alignment of intentions or whatever. And I'm not talking about fate. I don't even want to open that can of worms. No, what I'm saying is that one force acts and the universe feels it. Action, reaction. A stockbroker jumps off a building and lands on a fire hydrant. A year later, the fire hydrant becomes altered and fills a city block with poisonous gas. 83 people die. The stockbroker lost millions because a company selling mining equipment went bankrupt, which happened because a mine in northern Canada collapsed because of a faulty brace, which I'm sure was faulty because some factory worker made a mistake, which was only because he was tired because of blah, 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 blah. You get the point. Everything has a cause which leads to an effect, which then serves as the cause for something else, and on and on and on. There is no fate or synchronicity. There is trauma going on forever like a chain connecting everything through mutual pain. My altered items are just links on that chain. We need to help these poor objects, not treat them like criminals. Just because a refrigerator can't tell you it's in pain doesn't mean it's not. I guess it's no surprise we can't empathize with appliances. Hell, we can't even empathize with our own species properly. We kill and imprison people and never think twice. We're the real monsters. They should lock us up in the Panopticon. The altered items are just victims of circumstance. They never asked to be altered. But hey, let's just put them in jail instead of trying to help them. Because that would require a heart. That would require the ability to feel something other than hate. And envy and self-centered, stupid, goddamn, idiot, lizard brain narcissism. <sighs> Sorry, I, I got a little, uh, carried away there. Uh, oof. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna just sit down for a second. Do you read horoscopes? I do. They're very handy. Don't get me wrong. I don't think the planets are aligning to dictate my entire life, but you know, it's, it's kind of comforting. I bet you're a 
an Aries. Am I right? I'm right, aren't I? Knew it. I'm a Taurus. Lots of trust between those two signs. So that's good. It means we're going to do great things together. Look at how we're already tackling this Hartman problem. We've got this cat in the bag. I never realized what a horrible phrase that is. Anyway, this whole Hartman thing has been tearing the Bureau apart for two years now. Kirkland, the old sector head, even resigned over it. But you just rushed in and took the problem into your own hands. That's leadership. No politics, no blame. Just good, honest work. That's how I work, too. I come in, get to work, leave at five. No exceptions. Well, some exceptions. When, when the building is on mandatory lockdown, for example. Or when someone spills their soda on altered item 14 and I have to stay late to oversee the cleanup because they needed someone to sing to it while that weird old janitor wiped the soda off, all because Ted had to take his soda into the cell with him even though food and drink are expressly forbidden inside Panopticon cells. And then you have to go talk to HR about getting Ted reassigned to maintenance, which is a whole thing. Now, not that I'm vindictive, I just, uh, you know, thought that working in maintenance would give Ted a chance to realize the importance of uh, cleanliness and uh, proper, you know, sanitation. Yeah, it's good for him. And, and you know, when he's done, we can reevaluate, assuming he's still alive. Not to be morbid, but I mean, this Ted issue may have taken care of itself. Uh, that didn't come out right. Ted may, uh, have fallen in the line of duty and uh, may no longer require a position here at the Bureau. You know what I mean. Let's all pray for Ted. Not that I assume you pray. I grew up in a pretty religious household, so it's, it's just something we said. Like, good luck or break a leg. Everyone is real touchy about religion around here, so I, I don't want to offend anyone. It's funny how just because we handle all these paranatural things, everyone assumes religions are automatically out the window. I mean, I kind of see it as the opposite. If a talking Christmas tree is real, then why not some judgmental sky people? The more we think we know, the less we think is possible. What's that from? Doesn't matter. Boy, I could use some lunch. But I'm getting pretty sick of these rations. Today was supposed to be chicken parmesan day in the cafeteria. God, that sounds good right now. I usually bring my own lunch because the ingredients they use here aren't the freshest, but they really do make a great chicken parm. The breading is kept crispy even once it's in the sauce. Don't know how they manage it. Man, I really hope the kitchen staff survived. They're just, you know, bystanders in all of this. Oh, that reminds me. I'm going to log this whole thing as field experience. I only need 26 more hours until I can get field agent status along with my supervisor role. It gives me access to class two weapons and a small pay bump. Don't worry, I wouldn't ever actually see any action. I've put in, let's see, uh, I'm going to round up to four hours for now and then, you know, let's see what happens. Oh, another thing, business cards. What's our policy on them? I know as a secretive federal agency, we may not want staff handing out their details, but I think it's important that we're able to identify our status in the organization when it's required. I mean, you're the director and you're new, so I'm sure you'll be wanting to order some cards, right? And if you're already putting in an order, then we may as well make sure everyone is covered, if they want to be. I'm just asking you to think about it. No pressure. Anyway, we were discussing lunch. I'm going to go have a ration pack. Do you guys want any? Or are you just going to say we do not require nourishment or some other robot nonsense? Fine. Well, I'm going to go eat. You should get some lunch too, ma'am. I mean, that sector's been closed off for two years, so I wouldn't recommend eating anything you find in there. But I'm sure you can find something back in executive. Okay. Well, talk to you soon. Be careful. Langston out. I always wanted to say that. Over. Over and out? Is that what you say? Uh, over and out. Goodbye.